Um, they are few and far between, and uh, they do um, have to do with the imaging of the lymphatic system. Um, I can tell you that that's not part of our training and not something that we've done. Um, but things that we can do a little bit more than just send them with a pair of compression um, is uh, obviously rule out all these other issues, but there are pneumatic compression devices that patients can be approved for. Um, lymphedema clinics um, that you can um, uh, be attached to. Um, but surgically speaking, um, few and far between. I don't know, Jeep, I mean, if you. The lymphedema? No, I mean, it's not. I mean, it's. They have to be like, really safe to the right. point where the person can walk, um, face back. Um, but those patients, they, they can actually, you know, they can have a treatment for two years. Uh, and so it's, it's, and it's only done in certain centers. For the longest time, only one or two places in the United States did that. Now there's going to be a lot downtown. But you, with the, like the ankle, well, one case I sent there, it had to be just down. Both of So, you know, it's kind of walking up there. I just know that. But for this patient, the swelling in lymphedema compared to venous is one thing that you can always tell is that the swelling goes all the way like from the knee and onto the foot, onto the dorsum of the foot and the toes. It's almost always it's going to be lymphedema. Venous swelling almost always ends at the ankle. That's one difference. But we still, you know, a lot of them may have venous insufficiency. So we'll work up the veins also, uh, and even work up the maybe matron or iliac vein compression because if you can at least help minimize the swelling a little bit, it'll add some quality of life to them because it, it's just terrible. I, um, and, and especially when it's a young woman from like, I have them from, from high school, they come in and their one leg is swollen away to the toes and, and they're chilly. And it's just the ones that I hate telling them it's lymphedema and there's no cure. They're like, I mean, like this for the rest of my life, the answer is most likely I can maintain it, but I, there's nothing I can do for it, right? Um, and it won't be long for them to, to develop it on the left side. Um, so, and it, so that's lymphedema. But yeah, you can compress them, and then you give them lymphedema pumps that they can wear once a day for an hour while watching TV, and then wear the socks. And it's all you can really pretty much do is in terms of from, from, uh, from compression therapy for these patients. Um, I don't know if the prosthetic companies have anything to add, I mean, you guys, or, 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 or uh, Jan from lymphedema. If, do you guys have anything to add for lymphedema? Uh, they could do manual therapy programs. Okay. In instances that they get to improve the patient like, mentality and manual therapy can be really beneficial, especially in those people who come to our younger population. Yeah. Now, is it true that if they do have a wound, that you can't wrap them? No. You can wrap them with a wound. So you can't. Actually, the best result of a combination of the wound care along with compression so that you can control the edema and drainage. Yeah, because sometimes I get these patients from you know other centers that have them come to me to take care of the wound first before they'll wrap them. And I'm like, huh, but you think that you want to wrap them. lymphedema on the arm? Uh, no, no, they always <laughs> <take> <laughs>
Right. You know, that's that's a tough one. You know, I've had patients that uh, have predominantly intramalleolar small vessel disease, and uh, you know, you can take a bypass only so far. Um, you know, there are people that do pedal arch reconstruction. Um, uh, we've done some of that also, um, but really um, getting that far out, it's really hard. It's just got to be targeted medical therapy, daily dilators, um, sometimes topical. Um, calcium channel blocker creams on the toes. I've seen that work. Again, this is all you know, targeted, but when it's, when it's uh, that far down, um, really it's not too many surgical options that we can, we can do for that. Um, hyperbarics uh, is another thing, um, but uh, from a surgical standpoint, again, only so far you can, you can do it. I don't know, Gene, if you have any other suggestions. No, and they have that, and it's, uh, I mean, I may add plates off of that because that's a vasodilator. Right. I may refer them back to their uh, primary care doctor to add a vasodilator dilator as well on top of the plate health, um, but uh, it's, it's just very challenging. Uh, but right, Dr. Marcotte, maybe a, it's for, for patients who, if, if you're going to add a vasodilator to these patients, um, is there a go-to drug that you might be comfortable with? I used to have, I mean, they used to have, Medicare used to pay for these arterial pumps for those patients. And I had anecdotally had great results with people who had these small vessels and had kept people's, and had actually had wounds healed and kept these people's legs. And then they stopped paying for it. But the patients that had them, and I still have those patients, I have about maybe 12 left, but they will not, they will, they've used them ever since 2005, 2006 when they were in Cambridge. And they still have their their, their, their legs, but um, that that worked really good. It just is, but it's not available anymore. You can, but you had to pay cash for it. Um, I have a question for Dr. 